Oh, there we go. Good evening, everybody. My name is Tatiana Kiochetti, and I am the Executive Director of the Key Biscayne Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us this evening for the Village of Key Biscayne's final 2022 mayoral debate that we are co-hosting with Islander News. And once again, thank you, Husto Ray, for all your hard work preparing for this event, this special event, a special event, and to Marshall Steingold, who has agreed to be our moderator this evening. Husto will give him an, give him an intro. Uh, this is, again, a super important opportunity for Key Biscayne voters to learn a bit more about our two mayoral candidates as they discuss their vision and ideas for the future of our village. And now I am very delighted to introduce our two candidates, Fausto Gomez, alphabetical order, uh, and Joe Rasco. I would also like to introduce our timekeeper, Ale Fadel. Ale graduated from Mass Academy last year and recently interned at the Islander News and will be starting at NYU in January. Thank you again for agreeing to be our timekeeper for the second time this year. And while on the subject of time, I would like the audience to please refrain from applause and or reaction during the debate in order to respect the time allotted for our candidate responses. Please remember to place your phones on silent, your watches, anything that beeps. And now I will turn it over to the Key Biscayne Police Department, Officer Diaz, to uh, lead us in the recital of the Pledge of the Allegiance. Thank you again for attending, and hi, everybody from home. There will be standing for Thank you very much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good luck. Thank you. We'll make this quick. Good evening. Buenas noches. I'm Justo Rey with the Islander News and the Kiwis Daily Newsletter. It has been a pleasure co hosting these three debates with the Kiwis Ken Chamber of Commerce. And I once again I thank Director, Executive Director Tatiana Kiochetti and Marketing Manager Christine Wing for the hard work getting us to this point. Uh, they have to do a, heavy, a lot of heavy lifting to deal with me. Uh, and also thanks to all the candidates, uh, council member candidates. We have some here, Oscar, and Mayor and Council for their participation. Thank you, Fausto and Joe. Thank Buenas you. Suerte. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now a moderator this evening. Actually, it's a feeling for Steve Mall, uh, although he told me that he takes a back seat to nobody. Uh, originally from New York City, Marshall Steingold, not to be confused with the Steingold Bagels, which is one of the best ones in the country. He is well known to many business owners on the key. Uh, he moved to Miami to attend the University of Miami, where he obtained both an undergraduate and an MBA. Uh, he started Miami Maps 25 years ago, producing what Marshall calls free city guides, utilized by high-end hotel concierge to accommodate guests by guiding them to various experiences of interest. Before starting Miami Maps, Marshall worked with the Miami Tourism Bureau. Welcome, Marshall, and thanks for <coughs> volunteering. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So at this moment, let's, Marshall, you have the floor. Thank you, Justo. Uh, you're now being hired to do my public relations. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to fill in tonight. I hope I can do as good a job as, uh, uh, as Steve did before me. And the only uh, words I'd like to say before we begin or that uh, I remember the famous quote that says, decisions are made by those who show up. And you should all in the audience feel very proud of yourselves that you showed up tonight. And for those watching on TV, that you're taking a part of this. Because it's not an easy experience. It's not an easy bi uh, business running for office. I applaud both gentlemen because this is not easy. I ran for office when I was at University of Miami. I found it a very, very difficult process. I'm glad I'm not running, but I very much respect the fact that you guys are and you have a love for the community. With that said, welcome. Uh, this evening, we will focus our questions on two important topics, the proposed village charter amendments and the, the vision board plan presented to council this past Tuesday. The format tonight will be the same as our primary mayoral debate which was held in July. Candidates opening statements, there will be two minutes 
Uh, the order was determined by a draw. Each candidate will have two minutes for a response. There will be a one minute rebuttal and or commentary from each candidate if desired. Candidates closing statements will be two minutes each. An order uh, was determined by a draw and the candidates may ask questions of each other within their allotted time. Our timekeeper, Ali Fidel, will alert the candidates when there are 30 seconds remaining in a candidate's answer period and then when the allotted time has expired. Based on a coin flip conducted earlier today, Fausto will go first with the opening statement and then Joe will receive the first question. Uh, Fausto, uh, you will deliver your opening remarks first. Good luck to both of you. You can begin. Good evening, Key Biscayne, and thank you for the audience that's here and certainly the audience that's watching us on television. And my appreciation to the Islander News, the Chamber of Commerce, and Marshall you for taking on the task of being the moderator. In the interest of time, I will forego an opening statement. We only have one hour. The charter changes in Vision 2040 are significant issues, probably the most significant issues in this community, and I would like to just get to it and, and address your questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Joe? I, I think it's important for people to understand who you are and where you come from. So I'm going to say, um, I'm Joe Rasco. I'm running for mayor of the village of Key Biscayne because I love this island and because I want to preserve its small town character. I have been here for 44 years. I've uh, been married to my lovely wife, Anna, for 44 years, and together we were able to raise our three amazing children. We have six grandchildren, and two of those grandchildren live here on the island. Uh, my civic engagement of Keeves Kane has spanned 40 years, and that included uh, the incorporation movement, the first council, and being mayor before. And we delivered uh, throughout that period of time with the village green, the community center, the fire station, and the police station. I am proud of these achievements that have made us a world-class community. We're now at a crossroads. We're at a critical juncture where there are major challenges ahead. Three of those I will enumerate will be the Bearcut Bridge and the Rickenbacker Causeway working on resiliency infrastructure projects here on the island, and third, enhancing our quality of life, and that is taking care of Seconds. our children and making sure that we have, we have additional playing fields. Solving these issues will be costly, but I have a proven track record of delivering transformative capital projects on the island without raising taxes. Key Biscayne deserves a trusted leader to guide us into the future, and that's why I'm asking for your vote on November 8th. Thank you. Thank you. And now on to the debate questions. In this election, village voters are being asked to vote on seven amendments to the village of Key Biscayne Charter. The amendments include, number one, increase the threshold for capital projects to be approved via ordinance with notice to voters from 500,000 to $1 million. Number two, the village debt cap. Raise the debt cap from 1% to 2% of the assessed value. Number three, allow the debt cap to be exceeded if approved by voters. Number four, allow land development regulation amendments to be made by a supermajority of the council. Number five, establishing primary election for council members as it currently exists for mayor. Number six, require electronic public notices for things such as sunshine meetings. And number seven, require an ordinance establishing supplemental open meeting requirements. Uh, the first question will be answered by Joe. The question is, we will start with amendment number two, the debt cap. What is your stance on increasing the debt cap from the present 1% to 2%? Please explain with as much detail as possible why you have adopted your position. And then, independent of amendment number two, how would you recommend voters decide on amendment number three, allowing the debt cap to be exceeded 1% if the amendment does not pass or 2% if it does, if approved by the voters? Again, please explain your position 
with as much detail as possible. Thank you for that question, Marshall. Um, I'm in favor of Amendment 2. This amendment raises the debt cap from 1% to 2% of assessed value. So first of all, let's remember that Key Biscayne has always been an excellent steward of our citizens' dollars. And this debt cap will still be the lowest debt cap in Miami-Dade County. But there's a sense of urgency that we have, and that urgency is about taking care of resiliency. We are a barrier island. We are vulnerable to resiliency. And it's been unfortunate, but the effects of storm damage in Sanibel and the West Coast are something that we need to be looking at very closely. We need to go forward with these resiliency projects now. The $100 million bond, which was approved two years ago by the electorate, is, as, as we speak right now, would be in conflict with our current debt cap at $81 million. So this modest increase would allow the village to complete these projects. I'm 100% in favor of this debt cap so that we can tackle these resiliency projects, and I'm not afraid about going forward with them. Um, the second part of your question about Amendment 3, I think this amendment also makes a lot of common sense. This amendment gives the residents, the seconds. voters... The, where am I? 30 seconds. Thank you. The, it gives the voters the potential to exceed the debt cap by a majority of the electors. I want to give you an example. What, what if we're working through these resiliency projects and something really important comes along, like trying to find five acres for playing fields, and, and, and all of a sudden that becomes available? That is a, a reason why we have this amendment, so that if we are at that limit, we can, by the voters' request, go above it. Thank you. Fausto, your turn. Same question? Same question. No. Thank you, Marshall. Well, I disagree. I think raising the debt cap right now is premature. Let me tell you the reason why. Number one is we have no projects. Number two, we have no cost estimate of what these projects will cost. Number three, we have no measurements for the projects. So the first resiliency project, and let's call it that, is the K-8 project, which has been in the works for approximately eight years. During that period of time, we brought money from Tallahassee which I'm sure is in the bank account here somewhere, to try to help with the project. Right now, the village has retained a uh, estimator to look and see what is the cost of the project moving forward. It is estimated by the village itself that it's a $30 million cost. We will not break ground on the K-8 project, which is the first one. The manager has said there's going to be eight zones at $30 million per zone. Again, that is his estimate. And that's the, more or less the estimate given by ACOM, which is the consultants that we hired. And ultimately, there is no need pressing for the debt cap being raised. The debt cap can be raised when we have projects, when we know the cost, and when we can measure them. And every two years, we can go to the ballot or we can have a special election. Frankly, if somebody else, somebody else is on the ballot, at no cost to us. 30 seconds. So I don't, see the, I don't see the urgency to raise the debt cap. Again, when we have no projects, no cost estimates, no timelines, and no measurements. Uh, you're looking at me for a rebuttal? Yes. Okay, please. So, by, by his own account, we're talking about eight zones at $30 million. That's $240 million. So, we have a debt cap right now at 81 million. We have been told by the voters that it's important that you use this financing method, which is called the general obligation bond, and they authorized us to go to $100 million. So I don't understand what the hesitation is that, that we do not pass this debt cap, because this debt cap is putting us in position to go forward with these projects. It doesn't mean that we're going to use up that, that capacity. It just simply means that we get the job done and we're ready to do it and, and to go forward with the resiliency projects. Fausto? Sure. Well, I obviously take a different view. 
It's very simple. Again, the first quote unquote resiliency project will break ground in 2025. We're now in 2022, so we're talking about three years from now. We do not know what is the actual cost of the resiliency projects. We don't know the actual design of the zones. We don't know what is the timeline for them, and we have no measurement for them. I think, frankly, it is incumbent for interest, for good budgeting, good budgeting and responsible budgeting, that we have those facts in front of the residents of Key Biscayne prior to ask them to approve additional debt. Thank you. We'll move on to question number two. And there are only four questions tonight, and we're doing well on time. Question number two. We now move to amendment number four, and you will have three minutes each to respond and a one-minute rebuttal. We'll start with Fausto. This proposed amendment will allow land development regulation amendments and zoning to be made by a supermajority of the council instead of a voter referendum. What is your position on this amendment? Please explain in as much detail as possible your position on this issue. A related question, if elected, do you pledge to do all within your power not to increase residential density on the island or commercial density? Thank you, Marshall. Amendment number four, let, let, let me say this. I have never, I've been around for close to 40 years. I have never seen a collection of charter amendments in any municipality that seeks to take the power away from the citizens, the voters, and consolidate the power with the politicians, the council. That is just an overarching statement. Amendment number four is, was put into place in, 20, in, 07, in 07 because the council at that time was reviewing a massive development in the old Sinesta site. And the citizens of Key Biscayne at that time in 07 did not trust the village to do what, needed to, what the citizens wanted, which was low density. Okay. So 77% of the voters of Key Biscayne voted to, to put into the charter a limitation that th things of this nature had to go to the voters. Subsequently, the council tried to amend that and put it to the voters again. It failed. And now this is the third or the second bite of the apple to trying to remove the power of the citizens. I believe in democracy. I believe in the power of our residents to do, to control their own neighborhoods rather than a supermajority or, or any majority of the council. That, and frankly, I think this opens the door to massive development. And it's not only my words. Let's look at the words of former council member Michael Kelly, who was quoted as saying, the wolf is at the door, don't let him in. Council member Kelly was one of the leaders of putting the provision of, of making sure the citizens would have a vote with regards to uh, planning and zoning changes. Thank you. Uh, Joe, same question. Yes. We absolutely differ in this regard. I, I trust the people we're going to elect. I'm in favor <laughs> of amendment number four. And let me say unequivocally that I'm not in favor of density on this island, and I have never been. It's the whole reason why we incorporated back in 1991. And it's important to know history to preserve our unique quality of life. And this amendment has nothing to do with density. This is an amendment to make it easier for us to conduct the business of this village. This allows the development regulation and amendments to be made by a supermajority council and also having the ability to do it by, by way of a referendum. It allows for flexibility and efficiency. Even the people that like the uh, that don't like the amendment, they uh, admit freely that it is uh, inefficient to have an election after an election to change minor things and definitions. Um, many challenges to the changes to the land regulations are not controversial and would allow for us to make these improvements. Again, let me read from the text. The proposed charter amendment would allow approval of such text amendments by two, two, two ways. Majority vote of the electors and vote of five or seven council members. 
this power isn't taken away. It, this, is, this is not accurate to say that any power is taken away. The citizens continue to have that power. It's hidden here in this amendment. Yeah. Any uh, rebuttal? Sure. Obviously, this is, I think, the key issue that divides Joe and myself. This amendment will absolutely open the door to overdevelopment of Key Biscayne. Absolutely. Frankly, this has been, the provision has been in the charter since 07. To the best of my knowledge, in the 20s, some odd years, whatever years, there has never been the need for having an election on land use and zoning changes. 30 so, seconds. So, frankly, we need to defer to democracy. The people who are going to elect us and the people who elect the council, this is their community. This is their right to vote on what their community should be. These are, you know, these fancy words, frankly, don't cut it. Let the people vote. The amendment clearly says that a majority of voter of electors can be a method to solve these issues. I am committed to making this government more efficient. And I've even gone as far as to say, if there is an ordinance that could be brought up, and I understand from the village attorneys that it's possible, if there's an amendment that needs to be brought up, I'm willing to bring it up. Uh, an additional ordinance that would clarify what has to be voted on and what doesn't have to be voted on. So it, it's simply, I, I feel it's just fear mongering. There, there is no problem here. We have never as a community been for overdevelopment. I don't know why we would start now. No. So le let me address fear mongering, which I think is an important issue. So it obviously, Joe is trying to say that my campaign is trying to fear monger the community on this issue. I reject that because, frankly, we have former council member Kelly having the same position that I have. You have former Mayor Peña Lindsay having the same position that I have. You have current council member Segurola having the same position that I have. 30 have seconds. Leading members of this community like Mac Priyanik and uh, Gonzalo Valdez Fauli and Eric Schott having the same position. So if you're going to call fear mongering, then you need to expand it and say all these leaders of our community are fear-mongering, and they are not. They are simply trying to preserve our way of government. Let the people vote. What is so wrong or what is so threatening of letting the people have their vote? Joe, I have to give you a minute. Thank you. There is nothing in the amendment that takes that power away, and nothing that has been said so far gets anywhere close to that. We have the ability to vote on it if that's what we want to do. And then we also have an efficient way of doing smaller things, less uh, cumbersome things by having a super majority. That means five out of seven people have to vote on something. 30 seconds. That is not a simple thing to do, but it is, this is what's called the classic wedge issue. You, and this is using tactics that happen across the bridge. We, we don't have those tactics here on Key Biscayne. We, we, t we tell people what is at stake, what's important, and they can read it and find out and make up their own mind. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, that, that, that was two rebuttals each. I think that's enough if you don't mind. We're going to go on to question number three. Uh, Joe, you'll be answering first. Briefly, what is your position on the other four amendments? increasing capital project threshold, primary elections for council seats, as it exists for mayor, electronic public notices, and ordinance for open meetings requirement? The easy answer is I uh, support all of them. Um, it, do you want us to take them each one, or are you good with the? Uh, you can answer it however okay. you wish. Um, the First Amendment is also an efficiency item that uh, we have uh, changing the notice requirement. The notice, it's to send you something at home from uh, taking that from 500000 to a million dollars. This notice must be mailed uh, to each elector and it costs the village over $7,500 
per capita project and it delays projects. So this is a reasonable thing. Uh, it hasn't been changed since 2002. It is uh, it taking the uh, impact and effects of inflation into account, and we're simply just gonna make the notice from 500,000. Now the trigger is a million. Um, you mentioned, oh, uh, the other, the number five is about the primary. Uh, it, it establishes a way for us to, to uh, when we have a huge number of candidates, it would have to be usually nine or 10 or something of that order for this primary election to kick in. It seems like it's a reasonable way so that we can whittle down a large number of people that are interested in running. 30 um, seconds. Um, the uh, amendments six and seven are very much in line with improving our communications with our our, our people. With uh, and also it it includes a a way for us to strengthen the sunshine laws here in, in our island in our local government. And I am in favor of them also. Thank you, Fausto. Same sure. question. Yeah, I am in favor of safeguarding our community. I am in favor of safeguarding our charter. And these amendments, as I said previously, I've never seen such a collection of amendments that seek to consolidate power in the hands of the politicians rather than in the hands of the citizens and the voters of this community. Let me take them one by one. Amendment one, the rationale is we spent $7,500 on mailing if we go from 500,000 to a million dollars. What is $7,500 when we're talking about multi-million dollar projects or multi-million dollar expenditures? That is simply a way for you out there and for you in the audience not to have your voice heard. It's simple. Amendment two is the um, doubling the debt cap. We've discussed that already. Amendment three, we've discussed that. Amendment four, we've discussed that. Amendment five, tr council primaries. Let me tell you what the council primary is gonna do. It's gonna make it much more expensive and less likely that people in Key Biscayne are going, are going to run for office. Okay? And so what you're going to be doing is you're going to concentrating the supermajority, the supposed supermajority, you're going to be concentrating. Amendment 6 and 7, frankly, I think are fine. You know, and I would assume there's only one member up here who was on the Charter Review Commission and put these things on the ballot, and I can tell you it was not me. Uh, rebuttal? Yes. No. Um, I guess for, for some things, uh, people want efficiency in government, but for other things, we don't. Uh, and th this is clearly what am Amendment Number 1 does. It, it makes our government more efficient. It, it allows for streamlining a process. And by the way, these things are talked about in, in, in ordinance format. That means that there are two hearings on any capital improvement that we seek to do, whether it be 500 or a million. So the public always has a chance to look at the situation. 30 and, seconds. And to be able to uh, uh, have input. And that's what this is all about, input. And this is what we've done in this government from the very beginning, and nothing is changing. And I am proud to support these amendments. I don't have any problem doing so. Pastor? Listen, um, these amendments are not mine. There's two people up here. These amendments I did not put on the ballot. I disagree with the amendments. They take away our right to vote, period. Now, we can have a word salad or we can have the facts. And the facts are that the people of Key Biscayne own this village and have their right to have their voices heard. And what these amendments do is essentially preclude the citizens of Key Biscayne from having their voices 30 heard. 30 seconds. Don't need it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And now for our final question of the evening. Uh, and Fausto, you will begin with the answer first. Uh, the Village's Volunteer Strategic Vision Board recently sunset after completing a comprehensive vision for the future of Key Biscayne and presented it to Council this week. A, what are your own personal thoughts on aspects or the entire vision plan that was presented to council. B, your overall opinion of the process that was used to receive residents' input and how the plan was developed. 
and C, did you participate in the process or attend any of the public meetings? Sure. Thank you. So the vision plan is a comprehensive vision for Key Biscayne going to 2040. What was interesting is that the vision committee spent $160,000 of our money creating this vision. And subsequently, when questions have been raised about the 2040 vision plan and aspects of it, sort of the, the sponsors of it are backing away from it themselves. They're saying, oh, well, this is basically a vision. This was not going to happen. There's things that may happen, things that cannot happen. So if things are not gonna happen, why did we spend $160,000 for pretty lines on a tablet, number one. Number two, listen, there are aspects of the vision plan that I support. There are aspects of the vision plan that I criticize. And I criticize particularly page 48 of the vision plan that shows what the vision plan looks for for the commercial sector of our community, the commercial corridor of our community, which is massive development. And you know something? The chairman of the vision committee this week stood in front of the village council and essentially confirmed my, uh, my opinion, not only my opinion, but the opinion of the other members, of the other individuals that I spoke about. What did the chairman say specifically, or sitting, standing right there? He said, well, we protect, we preserve private property rights. However, if somebody wants to redevelop their property, 30 they can, seconds, they can do it with increased density, basically. I, and he also talked about having senior housing on top of the commercial aspects of it, which is multi-floors, okay? I am very much con concerned with the vision for the um, commercial sector. Did I participate in some of the vision plans? Yes, I participated in two. Let me tell you why I did not continue to participate. Frankly, um, when there was a discussion about lane- Time. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to that later. Okay, Joe, same question. On the vision board. Uh, first, I wanna be uh, very thankful to the residents who gave their time and service to this community. They spent three years crafting this vision. There was transparency of this process. It was unrivaled, the transparency that existed with this. The level of engagement 7,000 hits on a website, uh, hundreds of hours of dedicated time by uh, lots of people. That's the input of this community about how we might look in the future. I'm immensely grateful to them for uh, taking the time and dedicating hours and hours of volunteer time to go ahead and uh, put this vision of the future together. I also want to thank the village staff who for three years also worked very hard on this process. So it, it's, it, it pains me to see that in a very dismissive manner we say, oh no, this is all terrible work that they've done and, and none of it makes any sense. Well, I, I think it makes sense. And again, the history should be our teacher. We had a 2020 vision plan and wow, they did absolutely great things too. But no, now, now because there's an election, no, no, we, we can't have a vision plan that would talk to us about important things. 30 seconds. Um, it, it is preposterous to tell people that their rights are gonna be taken away. That, 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 that just doesn't have anything to do with what this vision plan. This vision plan, talks about very positive things. It talks about civic engagement. It talks about resiliency for a long part of this document. So it, it, is, it, it is an idea that needs time. to be worked on over time. And yes, I did participate in their deliberations. Fausto, your rebuttal? Sure. So I participated, I think, in the first two vision plan sessions. I did not participate in others. Why? because the discussion was looking at narrowing the traffic lanes on Crandon Boulevard to nine feet. Under state law, you cannot have a nine foot wide traffic lane. If that was the level of discussion, frankly, you know, I just stopped participating because they didn't even know what they were talking about on traffic lanes. So, let, but let's move forward. <laughs> the village has said, and I, there's a document in their budget document, there's a document in the budget for this year that says- seconds that we are changing 
our planning and zoning regulations to conform with the vision plan. So there's incongruence in my head. Partly saying, the supporters of it are saying, oh, this is simply a vision, it's not gonna happen. However, the government is moving forward to enact the vision plan in our, in our regulations. So there, there's an incongruence there. I'm not saying that, that, that we're taking away the rights of Fine. citizens. What I am saying is that the commercial corridor is overdevelopment of Key Biscayne. Thank you. Joe, your rebuttal. Thank you, Marshall. The truth is that, that the 2040 vision is an idea. It is a flexible living document that can be revisited and supplemented over time. The vision plan addresses a multitude of different ideas to think about our future. What's the problem of thinking about ideas? Are, are, are we not able to have ideas and to look forward to the future? 30 seconds. Our future is important and resiliency is a huge part of that future. We need to have discussions about all these things. We've had good discussions in the past. The 2020 came up with the idea of Mast Academy. The 2020 came up with the idea of the dog park. All these positive ideas have come out of discussing things and having a plan and having a, a, a enough time. input from the public to deal with things. Thank you. Gentlemen, it is now time for closing remarks. And by the cost of the toy, uh, Joe, you will go first, please. Thank you. Enough is enough. Key Biscayne has had enough of the negative campaigning. My campaign has never engaged in these tactics. Key Biscayne has had enough of the fictional narratives and fear-mongering. I am against density in Key Biscayne. I am against privatization of the causeway. Key Biscayne has had enough of our residents attacking one another. Residents who have volunteered their time selflessly and transparently in a manner to craft a vision for our next generation. I applaud the vision board and stand by them and their strategic plan. Key Biscayne has had enough of misinformation campaigns and politics of fear. I proudly support the amendments to the charter on the November ballot. They make our government more efficient and they provide necessary flexibility. They maintain all the while safeguards that protect the rights of our business owners and our residents. Dialogue and discussion are at the foundation of our democracy. And of course, we can disagree. But it has always been the practice on Key Biscayne that the conversations be in good faith, that the dialogue be constructive, and that the narrative be based on facts. Let us return to that standard of camaraderie, civility, and engagement Seconds. for the good of our community. And finally, let me say this. There's no place on Key Biscayne for neighbors attacking neighbors to score cheap political points. Key Biscayne deserves better. I'm Joe Rasco, and I'm running for mayor of the village of Key Biscayne because the village deserves a trusted leader to guide us into the future. Thank you, and God bless Kibis Kane. Thank you. Fausto, closing remarks. Yeah, thank you. The people of Kibis Kane have graced me and my wife, Alina, opening their doors to us. We have enjoyed meeting many of our neighbors and thank them. Standing on a street corner with a sign waving as a car goes by gives one a very good feel of who we are as a community. Anonymity is a shield. Yet, we have shown we are good and decent people. My wife and I are privileged to live here, and these experiences have only strengthened my desire to protect, protect our way of life. Whether on your door or in a corner, many of our conversations were the same. I heard your apprehension about the many challenges facing us. I also heard your doubt about who could lead our community and safeguard it as we are dragged to an uncertain future. I have never run for a public office before, but I say that this experience has been transformative, and it's been transformative because of you, the people of Key Biscayne. Let me share two experiences. One 
We met with another lady who has lived in the same house since the 1950s. She related to me how much she loves Key Biscayne, but how unaffordable it has become. She lives on Social Security and a small pension. The only thing she asked of us was to look at our municipal expenditures as if it were our own household budget. 30 seconds. I pledge to do that. For the past couple of months, I have done a number of these forums. We have talked about our vision for Key Biscayne, and I have given you thoughtful and, um, thoughtful and concrete <coughs> answers to our challenges. But these answers are not mandatory. Notwithstanding my, my detractors, they are merely suggestions that we will bring to council so we can together formulate Fine. a policy. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I want to say thank you for the way that you conducted yourselves. Thank you for bringing the information forth that you both feel very passionately about. And good luck to you both. To the audience, I'd like to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, I think it was Pericles that said, just because you don't take an interest in politics doesn't mean that politics doesn't take an interest in you. <laughs> so for those of our peers who live on Key Biscayne who can vote, who are not here tonight, democracy is not a spectator sport. Those of you that are here tonight, I think you should give yourselves a round of applause and thank you for making this great night. God bless America. God bless Keep the King tonight. <laughs>